What is the strife between y'all and geeks and gamers? I'm a fan of both. I don't know. Uh, there's uh, there's some uh, problems. The geeks and gamers thing goes back to the Zack Snyder situation, uh, which uh, I found to be pretty eye opening. I didn't like that at all. I thought that was weird. It just you know we all we all talk about how we're anti you know the establishment in Hollywood and stuff, but it just it it kind of becomes clear that really a push came to shove. Some of us would fall over our faces in order to just get a little attention from those people. Like uh, if um uh what's his name Ryan Johnson said I'll come on for an interview uh, with you guys. Uh, then how many of us would be like, uh, yeah, like definitely. I'd love to talk to Ryan Johnson. And by the way, once you got him on the air, would you be licking his balls? Uh, and I would guess judging from what I learned over the past couple of years, uh, that about 99% of these guys, uh, would be licking his balls. And that's what I learned. Uh, and a lot of it is just a grift to, uh, get super chats. I really don't like it. I, I mean what I say, you know, I'm here for a purpose. Uh, the super chats are great. I appreciate them, but I, I'm fuck these people. I I mean it. I mean when I say that, I'm not supporting them. And I, uh, but I mean maybe that's just I'm a creative person too. So I've always seen other creative people as competition rather than. I don't really have a lot of respect for uh, for my uh, contemporaries, even in the movie industry. Not a lot of respect. Uh, my respect goes back to uh, you know like a, I don't know uh, John. John Ford and like uh, Orson Welles, Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, I don't have respect for my contemporaries. They're just normal people. Look, either we're fighting like this is a culture war. We're trying to we're trying to do something, uh, you know, uh, to uh, combat like the uh, just omnipresent woke ideology present in, uh, you know, that's uh, in every avenue of uh, mainstream media, and uh, that that does mean making an effort in a lot of ways and standing by your ideals. Hmm. Uh, yeah, this is basically Joshua 45 says, uh, EVS predicted Zack Snyder would call them racist on air. Uh, he did. And then they got mad at me for it. <laughs> yes. Wait, Don't, they yeah. called you, <clears throat> you gave him the idea. Some gamers. Well, okay. yeah. So here's what happened. You have to explain. You have to explain I'll, I'll explain what happened. Carefully. So, yeah. first of all, there's a little bit of there was a little bit of static between me and Jeremy because Jeremy thinks I big timed him from the very moment that we met. Uh, I was in Florida in 2018 doing a, an in-store signing tour. Uh, I was uh, for a weekend. I had to do like six different shops, and I'd done three in-store signings. And you can find videos for me doing those appearances. And I was very tired. And Jeremy said, "You're in Florida, dude. I live in Florida. Can we meet up?" And I was like, oh, I'm real no, I'm I'm really tired. Like I just, you know, I, I want to go back to my hotel room. And that really annoyed him, from what I understand. That really pissed him off. And he like he went, oh, and he got like kind of sulky. I said, All right, look, I'll meet you at the Toys R Us across the street. We we're in the Orlando uh mall, I think, Gary. I was staying in a hotel near there. So there's a Toys R Us across the street. And we did that great live stream where we went shopping together. We met up, we bought all the Rose Ticos and then put them on the cars of everybody <laughs> in the parking lot. Uh, and it was really creative. It was really fun. And I thought we were friends and everything. But deep down inside, he kind of bore me a grudge. Like, I thought I was better than him uh, because what? I didn't just immediately drop everything and say, I'd love to hang out with Jeremy Griggs from Geeks. I could give a fuck. You know, it's like, so um, uh, anyway, but I thought we were friends. We had a little bit of static, like, during High Council because I think he was more of a YouTuber than I am. YouTubing is a means to an end. I enjoy it. I like doing this. I want to communicate uh, about what you know I'm all about, about my work, but I'm not a YouTuber per se. I'm more of a comic book artist who YouTubes and crowdfunds. So um, it was always a little bit of static there. But anyway, um, what happened was Jeremy is growing his brand. He's growing his team. And uh, he hires this guy, Uche, who was a former NFL player. And uh, he said, I'm, I'm opening up a sports Geeks, uh, sports and something or other channel. It's going to be Geeks and Gamers, but about sports. And I'm going to have Uche there. He's an NFL player. It's going to be big for my channel. Well, because Uche had worked uh, with the NFL, he had a lot of clout that, say, somebody like Jeremy doesn't have. Uh, and he was able to convince, he was able to talk to Zack Snyder's people uh, when they were about to release the Justice League movie. Hirash Mataru says, some people are YouTubers and nothing else. Yeah, I know. And I, I respect that. That's fine. But I mean, you know, mean what you say, stand by your words. 
Uh, you have an audience. You're representing an audience of people who are like, who believe you. Uh, so uh, uh, anyway, uh, that whole thing. So I, I said to him, uh, you know, they're, they're doing this uh, charity thing uh, that Uche got invited to be a part of. And Jeremy said, I'm going to attach geeks and gamers to it. I will help raise money for this charity that Zack Snyder's associated with. And, uh, you know, Geeks and Gamers is helping Zack Snyder's charity. Well, Zack told him not to do it. Zack said, I, I can't have your brand on my charity because you guys are toxic. Major Chokeout says, uh, Jeremy is a complete and utter pianist. Uh, and, uh, you know, I said, even still, apparently, even still, they convinced everybody that this was a Geeks and Gamers and Zack Snyder collaboration. They raised $100,000 in charity for Zack Snyder. You cannot buy your way in to woke Hollywood. I don't care how much money you give them. You cannot buy your way in. And why do you want to be there anyway? I wouldn't, why would you take your fans' money and give it to these people, even if it is for a charity? Do your own charity. It doesn't have to be associated with some Hollywood fucking hack. So uh, anyway, uh, they were all going to do a, hey, we're going to get him on our show. Now, Zack Snyder thought that he was going to be on there with Uche and some other people. He didn't know the Geeks and Gamers were going to be there. And so Ryan Kindle and a few other Geeks and Gamers guys, I guess, were in the chat beaming to be on a live stream with Zack Snyder. And uh, Zack Snyder came out and immediately denounced them uh, and said, uh, listen, oh. you know, like, uh, I thought oh, it was understood. Yeah, yeah, he said, I, th I thought it was understood that the Geeks and Gamers brand would not be on this charity. I thought we talked about this. Uh, and then he went on to just talk about Asian violence and how the no, hate speech on, coming from. I heard was, this. It was on, like man. the most. Let me bow to you. <laughs> no, you misremembered that a little bit. Go ahead. Yeah. Tell me where I'm wrong. When he came on, he goes, I disavow anything to do with Asian hate. And then <laughs> did that, which kind of made it seem like everybody. Like he was, was talking about. Was. Right. <laughs> 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 like there, there was a. He said, you know, no, what he said was something, and so you can get an exact quote, but uh, what he what he was basically saying was uh, the kind of videos that you make promote hatred. And, uh, you know, after the events of this weekend, that was when there was a shooting outside of an Asian massage parlor. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we need to be less about, you know, uh, this kind of rhetoric and this kind of a message. Listen, he didn't come out and say it, but everyone on the internet got it loud and clear. Geeks and gamers started trending on Twitter and all of the, uh, everybody, uh, was dunking on them because Zack Snyder had basically called them a hate group. Uh, and I've never seen anything like it. And I, I went absolutely uh, bananas about it. I was so angry uh, that they, they'd done that because, well, and they just sat there and took it. Nobody said, clarify what you're saying here. Like, are you calling these people who raised uh, $100,000 uh, for, uh, you know, for your charity, you know, this and that? So uh, are you calling them a, a hate group? Or, they didn't do that. They just sat there and took it. It was unbelievable. I was so angry about it. So I started live streaming. Uh, and my live stream overtook their live stream. And I was yelling. I mean, I, I was so angry about this situation. It seemed like a complete betrayal of the fans and everything that we stood for. And it was a disgrace. Uh like they never push back and says, why are you? They never defended. You're, you're you insinuating defend. that we're racist, but we never said that. And this is not, you're calling all our fans this is, racist, this is, please. Right. Like yeah. you represent all these Take people. You've back. got 300,000 people or whatever that are following you and that see you as a leader. And you, it it doesn't matter if it's uncomfortable. You've got to do your best to represent them. And you can't just take it on the chin like that. You've got to push back on behalf of your fans. Uh, and I said this to the quartering, too. It's like, don't let these people. This woman's making fun of gamers and saying they're all bigots and stuff. And you you have to stand up for gamers because that's who you represent. Uh, so and he, it's like, no, I, I don't know. Maybe the, maybe they, she has a point. This was the Frost situation. So uh, I, I, I remember just being furious. Now, Eric July was on a panel with them after it happened. And he left their panel to come on my show because uh, he was just like, yeah, dude, that was pretty fucked up. Uh, and then Jeremy left. By the way, Jeremy Gate kept me from that panel. After Zack Snyder left, I said, let me on. I have something to say. And they said, nope, we just have our boys on here right now. So I'm going to start my own live stream. So I said what I had to say on mine. Eric July joined me. Gary Nerdrotic sent me a little message. And he said, I'm with you, dude. I'm with you. Uh, and, uh, you know, all this stuff. And then Jeremy eventually came over to my show where my chat proceeded to skin him alive uh, yeah, with no, super no. chats. I was there. That was 
horrible. It was and you absolutely had to brutal. It. He hung in there. He hung in there as you read it. The I, the weird thing, and I, I'm kind of defending them for a second. And everybody can get mad at me for this, but it the way Snyder did it is it kind of came out in like fucking thirty seconds. Like, but you that was how sure. it started. It I, was I it was you know clip. it was it was a disclaimer. It was like a queued up like this is my disclaimer. I say now we can continue, and I take your money. Well, yeah, it was a disclaimer, but you know what was awful about it is that uh, there, there are several things about it. One, they didn't push back, but I don't think they could have pushed back because they, they knew they weren't supposed to be a part of this charity. Uh, they knew they right. weren't supposed to have their brand on it. They tried to slip their way into it anyway, uh, yeah. which put them in this precarious situation where their fans got dunked on uh, and they got dunked on their entire. So, uh, yeah, that was the whole thing where Jeremy's like, do you think I hurt my brand tonight? I'm like, yeah, I think you did, dude. I, I really do think that you did. Now, it doesn't mean anything because his channel is going to continue to grow. But what do you stand for? Like, seriously, what do, what do you stand for here? What are you trying to accomplish? Is it just sub growth? Is it just money? Is that what you're trying to do? Or are you, can you do both? Can you actually mean what you say and get sub growth and, and make money? Because that would be great. Like, that's that's what I would like to see. You make all these videos every day and you say the same thing over and over again. And you're fighting a fight. Uh, and then immediately, like, it just becomes clear, like, you don't you don't really mean any of it. Uh, and, and you know, you would just allow your fans, you would allow these people, this audience to just get destroyed by uh, one of the biggest Hollywood pieces of shit. And by the way, he's vulnerable. Like, Zack Snyder's vulnerable. Like, you don't have to take shit from him. You know, yeah. his career is over, too, because he's an asshole who, uh, you know, got uh, Warner Brothers. He got, uh, you know, three different. He like Zack yeah. Snyder, somebody who gave Warner Brothers Amber Heard. Uh, he gave him uh, uh, Ezra Miller. He saddled him with the Ray what's Fisher, it, cyborg Ray Fisher. Ray Fisher. Ray Fisher. Ray Fisher yeah. That guy's a piece of shit. Like if you're well, if you're well, Warner Brothers. On. And after this is when they discovered that a lot of the bots, that whole Snyderverse thing was a lot of bots and not real fans asking for it. <laughs> like, like, yeah, it, 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 I mean, so he Snyder kind of rang out DC Comics. Like, I mean, he, he, he didn't sure just did. Deal, he didn't even just take their money and give them a bunch of shitty movies. He came back and remade the same shitty movie and got, took more money. It was like a guy robbing a bank like three times. <laughs> He haunted Warner Brothers. Absolutely. Haunted. Like the biggest regret that they have, I'm sure, is ever working with Zack Snyder. Most people kind of, you do a couple movies, doesn't work out. Movies are uh, widely panned uh, and they lose money or whatever. It's like, we got to let you go. And you just say goodbye. This guy thinks that the DCU belongs to him and he's got a vision that's got to be, guy's nuts. And he, you know, utilized, he sold out my friend Jeff Johns uh, to uh, Grace Randolph, apparently. Was it Grace Randolph or was it Ray Fisher? Like, well, Grace. So Grace Randolph had an exclusive interview with uh, with Zack Snyder, and then suddenly she comes back from that interview with all this fucking dirt about Jeff Johns. Um, and it was Jeff Johns. He was the guy who basically dismissed Zack Snyder and brought Joss Whedon on to fix his oh, mask. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I wonder where that information came from. That's not information. That's those weren't scoops that uh, were available to everyone. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, DB says, don't forget when you called Friday night tights, zeros, uh, heel versus baby face, et cetera. I called them a zero after that. I called them all zeros. Mean what you say, dude. And do, and do, it can't just be about this. It can't just be, I appreciate the idea that it's about money. I understand that I'm here to make money too, but I mean, you can't, you can't do that stuff. Like really mean what you say in this, uh, in this culture war, stand up, you're a leader, stand up. All right. So uh, well, that that's where the that's where all of this is. You know, it's like, well, Ethan's a real problem. It's like I, I'm just here doing what I do, but I I would not I would have I would not have allowed that to happen to my peoples, my brand. I would not have I allowed that to um, happen when it's your fans and somebody calling your fans all these names. That Hell no! We're tired of it. Is the whole reason for the culture war in common scheme and is because we're being told that if you think differently, you're racist. So you got to stand up for your fans. Yeah, I mean, it's not. Uh, sometimes you have to do what's unpopular. Sometimes you have to be the person who's right. And everybody else is wrong, but you, you got to be the person who's right and who swims against the tide. It's very easy to just go along with what's going on there. It's tempting. But, uh, you know, you've appointed yourself you know, somebody who speaks on behalf of, look, Disney sucks and they hate you and therefore don't give them. 
And then, you know, what do you think? Zack Snyder's any different? He just told you to your face like over and over again. He's no different than these people. No different. Start funding something. And that's when, you know, Young Ripa came out with Ripaverse and everything. And uh, there began to become a, a kind of switch and a turn towards actually, you know, these guys making their own product uh, and stuff like that. But I, I'm not forgetting. I mean, it just seems. Uh, yeah, but don't you think like there's probably a time when it's like water up under the bridge and you kind of make up shane i don't have to be friends with these people i, I who are they i'm just on youtube no, no. i i occupy the same platform as them i i don't want friends like that i want people who are actually uh who mean what they say and who are trying to make something good that's what i want i want that's why i hang out with comic skate creators that's why i have comic skate kings comic skate kings is all creators who know how to make comics uh, Yurashima Taru says, EVS tried to bury the hat hatchet. Those guys went like this. Yeah, and that's true because the fans were just like, uh, please fix things. And I was like, I have fuck. So I went to Gary and I just said, look, you know, we have mutual fans that are upset about this. Is there any way we can have a chat about it? Nope, absolutely not. You know, so uh, that's just the way it is.